What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here with another video for you. Um, Sysadmin news, Sysadmin struggle, Sysadmin suffering, one of those three. Anyway, we're talking about VMware again. So I wanted to do this video mainly uh, to educate newer sysadmins on the parts that don't get covered in school, especially in relation to vendors and dealing with purchasing requirements and things like that. So we're going to use the VMware example because a lot's been going on with VMware and I've been wanting to talk about it. VMware in the beginning was, or for the beginning for me anyway, was a great vendor option for virtualization. Um, you didn't bother with Hyper-V, you didn't bother with KVM or, or any of these other tools because VMware offered everything you needed in one great package and it just worked. It was, it was fantastic. It did everything you needed to do and it did it well. Things changed. Obviously Dell bought them at one point, then they broke away from Dell uh, and now Broadcom bought them. And that's when things have been kind of shaky. You've probably seen a lot of stuff in the news, a lot of things on Reddit, people talking about switching vendors because of Broadcom, what feels like a lot of knee jerk reactions and things like that. What we need to cover is why people are acting this way what you should do as a new SaaS admin when you get put into these situations where you have to think about vendor options and product choices and purchasing and maintaining contracts and relationships and things like that. And kind of looking at, at what I've been through as a customer um, through my enterprise environment to kind of discuss these things. So um, let's look at it as right now. So we've gone through a whole lot of stuff since the acquisition. So Broadcom acquired VMware people instantly started going, I'm worried because it's Broadcom. Now that Broadcom has a past, things are kind of dicey with them in some areas and it makes people a little bit nervous about what's gonna happen with VMware. Let's move forward a little bit. The CEO comes out and makes a, a big statement, kind of a state of the business address for VM Broadcom, VMware Broadcom, shortly before or after a giant bunch of layoffs. Now. When you pick up a company, layoffs are going to happen. That's part of acquisitions. Uh, you're going to have people that are doing double duty. You don't need to keep them both. You let go of one or the other. Usually, bigger companies are going to let go of the folks from the company being acquired that they've already got people handling. So sales, stuff like that, people that work in accounting, people that work in, in budgets, and, and all that stuff that handles the larger, for instance, the larger Broadcom piece. They're going to keep the Broadcom people because they've been working at Broadcom and they're good at that piece. That's why they work there. They don't need the VMware version of those people because VMware belongs to Broadcom. So they just move those under as though they are separate products as opposed to a separate company. So boom, layoffs. What surprised me was they laid off a bunch of their training staff. And there's a Reddit post about this and I'll put that in the description below if I can find it again about how folks that had been in VMware classes were having trouble finishing the last day of classes because the trainers had been laid off that day. They didn't wait to lay these people off at the end of their final training sessions in sort of like a trickle. They said, we've got to cut this line here, save this money now, right at this instant. Except they probably had to pay severance packages anyway, and those people were probably getting paid till the end of the month. So I'm not really sure what the point of laying them off early was instead of just saying you're laid off at the end of your last training session, whether that ends in this pay period or not. It, pretty much you're laid off at the end of this pay period. Here's your severance package. I'm really surprised they went ahead and said you're laid off right this instance. Do not finish these classes um, because we're not paying you for them. I don't I don't buy that. So that's kind of weird there. But that's what we were seeing on Reddit. So that's another strike. Again, we're looking at this from a broad sysadmin point of view. So we've got to continue adding this information. Then the CEO article comes out where he says everybody at VMware needs to return to work because that's where we need to build culture and and the the CEO talk, the buzzwords about, you know, working in an office builds a culture and, a, and you know, helps growth and community and things like that. And I, I agree to that to some degree. I wouldn't have said you need to be able to walk on water to justify working remote. That seems a little bit crazy to me, but if that's the way he wants to push the company, then that's his decision. It, you know, he's running the company. I spoke to some VMware support personnel uh, recently because we had a ticket come in and I said, hey, what did you think about you know all this stuff? I heard you guys are going back to the office. He said he's not going back to the office. So he doesn't live near any of the VMware offices. So 
it must be a specific subset of VMware folks that are going back to the office. Uh, and again, this was a U.S. support representative because I'd heard already that they had cut the call centers in um, like India, things like that. Your first tier call support centers because Broadcom probably already has call centers. So why keep the VMware ones who are honestly probably the same call centers using the same script books anyway? Just adopt in those folks to the VMware script set and call it a day and get rid of any ex extras. No problem there. And, you know, things are going along and people start going, hey, have you heard from your new rep? Have you talked to your sales rep yet? We had not heard from our, our sales rep since all of this kind of started. Uh, come to find out he had gotten moved to probably cover for somebody that had been laid off. And we got a new sales rep who reached out to us once, asked to have a meeting, and we have not heard from him since. Now, obviously, it's a Christmas holiday. We're out of the office, things like that. So, but you know, we're, we're expecting to hear from him. We know we do still have a, a, a TAM, a, a sales rep specific to us. That's great. Then we get news about Broadcom is going to be selling off the U, the EUC, the end user computing and carbon black. Now carbon black, eh, not really a big, a big part on my list. I don't use carbon black. I don't know anybody it does. It's sort of like antivirus for VMware. Um, and user computing, though, is still pretty popular. So that's like Workstation, that's Horizon, that's a few of the non-cloud-based products. I expected them to start getting into that stuff. Broadcom's definitely wanting to focus on the cloud side of things for VMware, not so much the on-prem, though I don't think they're going to completely get rid of on-prem. But knowing that Horizon might not be a VMware product anymore is definitely affecting us. We offer computer labs and remote lab options via Horizon, and we're not really sure what's going to happen with that. So again, that's another piece we have to take into account when we're thinking about our plans, our five-year plan, our purchasing options, our design, and, and stuff like that. So that gets us pretty much up to right now. VMware just recently had another article come out. Well, I should say VMware Broadcom. Again, I'll put all this stuff in the description so you can read it yourself and make your own judgment because that's important here too. That's what we're getting to at the end. Broadcom hands VMware partners termination notice. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with the purchasing process and things like that, a lot of places don't buy directly from VMware. They buy through a partner. Dell was a partner. Dell was an owner. Dell was a partner. You could purchase it through Dell. So when I'm buying a server, I say, hey, I also want to buy VMware licensing with this. Dell, what's your partner quote going to be for that too? Just put it on the whole, the whole bid. We have some other partners that we work with that offer VMware. We're not sure which of our partners, if any, have been affected by this termination notice, which basically is just them saying, we're not complying with whatever agreement you had with VMware in the past. If you want to be a partner in the future, now I, this is, this is an assumption here, but this is probably what's happening. They're basically going to say, you can be a partner still. But these are the new terms of the of the partner agreement. Uh, and again, I get that. It's business. That's what you do. You structure your products to make your business profitable. Uh, it's coming out at a bad time, though, right near the holiday. So, Or really, it came out oh, just a hair before um, the holiday break. So that's why, one, we don't know if our partner is still a partner, even though our partner told us recently that their pricing agreement had been contractually accepted until 2026. That might be out the window now. So that means that we're out, as soon as Broadcom can sell it, we're out of Horizon through VMware. We'll have to get it through whatever other means there are if we want to keep getting it. We're out, we might be out of our partner pricing, which was the whole reason we kind of stayed with VMware. When we made a decision, we, we considered at one point moving away from VMware and going to Nutanix because Nutanix is a really cool product, though pricey, and we were paying the Nutanix fee and the VMware fee on top of it because when our Nutanix equipment had been purchased, they were like, we want to run Nutanix to get hyperconverge, and then we just put VMware on top of it. Cool, fine, but you're paying, you're double dipping. You can just run Nutanix and do their virtualization feature, AHV. And you don't need the VMware piece. So we were considering because we had heard, hey, our pricing may be going up 30% or more. Let's drop the VMware piece and just pay the Nutanix price tag and get hyperconverged that way. We love their support. We love their sales, everything like that. It looks really good. Well, then our, our partner came back and said, no, we're getting the higher ed pricing. We're good to go. We can beat them. And they can. So we said, all right, cool. We're going to drop Nutanix and we're staying with VMware. This was before 
Broadcom had even made an attempt to purchase VMware. So we, you know, we did what we could do and we got stuck. So we're going to keep maintaining VMware, but we have to consider our options, especially since a large part of our infrastructure requirements is are those virtual labs. All of this to say, these are things that you as a sysadmin have to take into account that they don't discuss in a classroom setting a lot of times. You know, they'll tell you, oh, you need to pick a product. Oh, you need to pick a service. You should look at Gartner quadrants and, and all of this stuff. Look at the data, look at the numbers. Yeah, do that, but read the news. You know, check what your, what your vendors are doing, what products they're offering. Read places like Reddit. Find out what actual customers are using, how they like those products, what they're using those products for. Because remember, not everyone's use case is the same either. We use VMware to virtualize servers, and that's about it. We use Horizon to virtualize desktop computers, and that's about it. We don't do a lot of real fancy stuff. We don't run like ARIA operations. We don't run vRealize. We don't run NSX. We don't do Carbon Black. We have no need for those products. So a lot of the VMware subset of the bigger pieces of the puzzle, we just don't do those pieces. That's not to say there's not a use case. It's just that they're not part of our use case. So in the long run, do we really want to keep using VMware? Can we switch to something like Hyper-V? Can we move to the cloud? More than likely, yes. Um, you know, we kept VMware because like many, many places, we had a lot of admins that are comfortable with it. And now they're getting comfortable with other software and other technologies because VMware is kind of a risk. That's what we're having to consider at this point. When Broadcom is making all of these big, quick changes, uh, not giving us a lot of information, pricing came out um, for end of the year before January. January's pricing sheet hasn't come out yet, but the end of the, of the year pricing sheet did come out as the new Broadcom VMware pricing. Prices we're not so much concerned with, but there's no higher ed pricing as of yet. That doesn't mean there isn't higher ed pricing, but... If we don't see those in January, that's probably the nail in the coffin for not just us, but many universities everywhere. Because the higher ed discount that we got was extremely, extremely beneficial. Because most higher ed places, sadly, still consider IT a cost center. If higher ed pricing is gone through Broadcom slash VMware, that's going to be a big tick in the move away box for us. So... So we have to take all of this information that we've that we've gathered, look at what's going on in the landscape, look what other folks are doing, figure out what we feel like we're comfortable doing, and then make a decision. And that's what you need to do as a sysadmin. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and go, you need to get off of VMware. It's it's bad. It's awful. It's horrible. That's not what, what this video is about. Um, this video is just pointing out what has happened during the Broadcom VMware acquisition and what that has done for a lot of customers. Again, you're still gonna see a lot of people online that are, are just gonna be like, what is everybody migrating to? Why should I change from VMware? Should I just go to Hyper-V? All of these hypothetical questions. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, they're doing their due diligence. They're, it's not that knee jerky, it's just we've been through it. We've seen companies get picked up and bought out and changed and then the product we really liked becomes this different monster, this this horrible thing. You, Probably not. You might have saw it before with LastPass. I used LastPass a ton. Then they got bought out. And the company that bought them out, whose name I can't remember, um, was basically known for not running a good product and, and ruining it. So I dipped. I left, I left LastPass. A lot of folks, you know, jump ship from Google Chrome to Firefox because of what's happening with the way they're changing ad blocking and, and things of that nature. A lot of people just stayed with Firefox even during the... Firefox consumes all of the RAM in the world fiasco because they just appreciated the way Firefox is handling their development cycle, their releases and things like that. And those are what you need to be aware of when you're a sysadmin. Keep an eye on your products. Read the news that's going on about them. It's, you know, and like I said, they don't talk about this and I don't know why. And if you have a class where they do talk about this, that's amazing. Tell everyone you know that is in IT at all to take that class if they say, Go out, research your product. And what they mean by research is read the news. Don't just look and see what all the technical aspects are. You're going to do that. You're going to need to look at all the benefits and all the, the bells and whistles and things that a product has. But you also need to look at 
how it's being used in the real world. What's the uh, what's the use case like? What are other customers like you using it for? Meet with those people. A lot of times a vendor will be more than happy to send you whoever will give them a glowing review. So that's why you got to go out to like Reddit and be like, hey, who here hates blah? And get those answers. Find out why they hate it. Um, that's huge. It's big. See if they'll you know be like, hey, where did you read about blah? Collect all this information. Build your network of useful news sources to get information about these products outside of what they do and how they do it. Find out, you know, who they deal with, what kind of pricing structure they work on. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. It was a bit of a ramble, uh, but I will edit it down. I do want to apologize to all of the Patreons out there because I've been kind of slacking because it's the holidays and I hope you're slacking too. I hope everyone's enjoying a wonderful holiday break. Remember that work-life balance is super important. Anyway, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.